All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Olua Sheon here. Now we want to continue with our Jenkins series. In the last video, we installed Jenkins and we basically, you know, did all the necessary setup that we were supposed to do. And now we want to take a quick walkthrough of the Jenkins All Right page. Now, on my left-hand side, you're going to see about four things, basically. There's the new item, the build history, the manage Jenkins, and your views, okay? Now, let's click on manage Jenkins to basically see what that, you know, um, contains or what is captured within the manage Jenkins page. Now, here, you have under system configuration, you have the system, you have the tools, you have plugins, you have nodes, you have clouds, you have appearance, right? Now, all of these options or menus, they all have their own um, use case, all right? For example, if you click on system, system generally will mean that this is where you can configure things that pertain to the Jenkins, all right, software or platform itself, okay? So, for example, here you can define a lot of things. For example, the Jenkins location, the URL, and all of that. You can define them here. And of course, if your system admin has an email, you can put it here. All right. And then, of course, you have a whole lot of things that you can do here, actually. Now, when you install any plugin in your Jenkins, all right, on your Jenkins server, there are certain plugins that will require you to configure some things in the Jenkins system, okay? Which means you have to go to Manage Jenkins, you click on System, and then you have to configure certain things that pertain to that plugin, okay? Now, there are some other system, or some other plugin, rather, I meant to say, that when you install them, you, all right, you have to go to the Tools section to basically do some configuration. Is that okay? We're going to see that as we go on in the course of these series. Now, right here, okay, I just want to, I mean, just an overview, okay? This is the system. Like I said, there are certain things you can configure here and, you know, you can do quite a number of things around this place, okay? But as we go on in the course of the series, I'm going to show you, all right, the things you can do within this particular system that you've, that we see right here. So let's go back. Now, if you click on Tools, on that tools is where you configure the different tools, all right, that you want to use within your Jenkins environment. So, for example, if you are building a Java application, right, right here, you need to specify your JDK path, okay? So, here, if I click on hard JDK, I can give my JDK a name and then I have to specify the full path, all right, of my JDK. So, it is assumed that you have JDK installed on the Jenkins server already. And that is the same JDK that you want to use to build whatever it is that you want to build. So you put the full path here to the JDK installation. For the Git, Git is already available by default. I mean, when we installed all the default plugin, Git was part of the default plugins that was installed, right? And then here you have Gradle. Gradle is a build tool for Java applications. There's Ant and there's also Maven. Okay, these are build tools. Basically, they are tools that you use to package application into an executable form. That is what a build tool all right, does for us. Okay, so a build tool is basically used to take your source code, your application, and then build that particular application with all the dependencies and produce something for you that is now executable on the intended system. That is what a build tool basically does. So Maven is a build tool, Ant is one of them, Gradle is also one of the build all right, tools. Okay, now as you install plugins on your Jenkins server, there are some tools that will also appear right here. For example, in the course of this series, we're going to look at how to integrate Sonicube with Jenkins. When you install the Sonicube plugin, you're going to have all right, a configuration that you have to do on the system side of things. And then on the tools side, you have to do a configuration as well. So there are tools that, or there are tools or there are plugins. Let me just say plugins that when you install them, you have to configure them in the system settings and you have to configure them in the tool settings. Okay. So there are tools like that. Now, under here, we also have the plugin. So the plugin is where you install, I mean, different plugins that you want to use. Like I've said in the previous video, Jenkins is a platform, a CI-CD platform that depends heavily on plugins, which means there's nothing you want to do on Jenkins that you will not have to install one plugin or the other, okay? 
because Jenkins is a CI/CD platform, it means that you are going to be interacting with external systems. So your Git is an external all right, platform that Jenkins will have to interact with. Your AWS environment is also an external platform that Jenkins will have to also interact with. Okay, so in order for Jenkins to interact with all these external platforms, you need a plugin that allows Jenkins to connect with these external platforms. Is that okay? So in the plugin section, that is where you install these different plugins. So whether you want to send a notification to Slack, you need a plugin that will allow Jenkins to communicate with Slack. Whether you want to push something to your ECS cluster, you need a plugin that will allow Jenkins to communicate with your ECS cluster. Whether you want to push to your ECR or to Docker Hub registry, you need a plugin that would allow Jenkins to interact with all of these external systems. Okay, so that is why with Jenkins, you need a lot of plugins, right? For every service you want to interact with externally, you need a lot of plugins. And of course, you, when you're doing this, when you're doing CI CD, you're basically interacting with external systems, right? I mean, you're building something from a Git repository is, is an external system. You are pushing something to an ECI repository is an external system. You are pushing, all right, you, with your image, you want to run your image as a container on ECR, it's an external system. So in order for you to be able to interact with all of these external system, you need to go to Jenkins, go to the plugin section like we see here, and then select the plugins that will work for what you intend to do. All right. So under the update, update here basically will show you if there's any plugin that needs updates. You see that right here. Available plugins will show you the plugins that are available that you need that you can install. Okay, these are plugins that are available that have not been installed. Okay, and then install plugins basically will show you the plugins that you have installed already. So right here you can uninstall plugins if you don't need them again. All right, you can see all of that right here. And also, if you go to the Jenkins documentation page right here, you can also click on plugins directly here and it will take you to the plugin all right, page of Jenkins. And right here, you can search for the plugins that you need. So here, if I search for AWS, I mean, it's going to show me a number of AWS plugins that I can see right here. So there's the credentials. I can see the release date. I can see that this, this one here is released three weeks ago. This one was released seven months ago. And you can see the people maintaining it and you can see the person maintaining that particular plugin, all right? And then you can see that this plugin is for AWS. And you can also see the health score um, right here. Okay, so you can see a lot of plugins that relates to AWS, all right? So that is how to, you can also use this to search, or you can also come here to your available plugins and search for AWS, all right, plugins, and that will also show you the same thing. So you can see the AWS credentials, seven months, 14 days ago, and when we came here, we also saw that it was, I mean, seven months ago, all right? So that, I mean, correlates with what we see on the Jenkins uh, dashboard itself, all right? Now, one thing you must know is that Jenkins is an open source platform. So it means that people are contributing to this, right? I mean, there are people behind that are, you know, building all of these plugins and all of that. And there are sometimes that there's plugins that are no longer actively developed. Okay. So those plugins are sometimes, you know, you know, released for adoption for other people to, you know, take up the project and then continue to build it. And that, I think, in my own opinion, is one of the drawbacks of Jenkins, right? Because, I mean, it is heavily dependent on those plugins and they are open source. So, which means you can be using a plugin today and then in the next three months, four months, that plugin is no longer being actively developed. And then after some time, your pipeline begins to, you know, misbehave. And I mean, there are updates that you have to integrate into your pipeline and because the plugin is no longer developed, which means it doesn't no longer meet the, you know, the new standards and all of that, then your pipeline can break at the end of the day. So for me, that is one of the drawbacks that I think Jenkins or Rider has. Okay. I mean, if you come here and you basically scroll down, you can see that this plugin right here has been deprecated. And the last time it was built was eight years ago. Right. So you can see all of that. This one too was eight years ago. This one was three years ago. All right. This one, I mean, four months ago. And all right. Yeah. It says it's been deprecated as well. Right. And sometimes some of the plugins, when they are deprecated, there are new versions that will come up that you can use. But in some cases, I mean, it's just, you know, you just have to look for an alternative. For example, if I, if I search for Docker, for example, right, I can see there's Docker here 23 days ago. This one is three months ago. Right, that was the last update, the last release. This one, Docker Pipeline, five months ago. Docker API, one month ago. All right, and that one is even up for adoption. 
which means after some time, the people managing this particular plugin will no longer maintain it again. So they need people that will take it up and adopt the plugin and continue to build it. So what if nobody comes forward, all right, to pick it up? That means it becomes, all right, you know, um, it becomes amusing, right? And then this one, Docker Build, even though it's not up for adoption, can you see that? I mean, the last time anything was done on it was two years ago, all right? And, you know, two years ago and two months, Amazon ECR, this, this one is also up for adoption, right? I mean, so that is, like I said, for me, one of the drawbacks, all right, of Jenkins. Is that okay? So that is for the plugin um, section, Okay, and then you have notes. So this is the notes section is where you want to add, you know, notes. If you have some, you know, like I mentioned in the last video, when you're doing what you call a distributed build, you can have other notes that you can connect to the main Jenkins server. And then when you're building your pipeline, you can specify that, you know, some particular jobs can be built on that particular node. Okay, in the course of the series, we're going to look at how to, you know, set up another node and add it to your Jenkins server and then run a build. All right, on that particular node. Okay, so that means the job is not going to be executed on the Jenkins server itself. It is going to be executed on another node connected to the Jenkins server. Is that okay? So that is what the node is. And you have clouds. So cloud is something similar, right? Where you can add instances in the cloud as part of your distributed build. Okay. And then here you have credentials, you have security, you have users. So credential basically here is where you configure things like, uh, you know, your Git uh, public key, your SSH key, if you want to connect to an Amazon uh, EC2 instance, if you want to connect to Slack, for example, you need a token. So under credentials is where you configure, all right, all of that token. So if I click on add credentials here, I can see the kind of credentials that I can create. So here there's a username with password, there's a username with private key, secret file, secret text. I mean, a whole lot of credentials that you can create here that allows you to connect with all these external systems. I mean, when you want to connect to a GitHub platform, if your GitHub platform is not public, which means you're running a GitHub you know, repository that is private, then you need the SSH key. All right, to connect to that GitHub account. So here you have to put in the SH key, all right, with the username and all of that, okay, in order to connect um, to that, right? So that is what this is about, okay? All right, so that is for the Manage Jenkins under, you know, credentials. And of course, you have a whole lot of other stuff right here that you can also play with. But as we go on in the course of the series, we are going to definitely, you know, touch on different things, all right, as we go on. As you can see, we're using the latest version of Jenkins. All right, this is 22, all right. If you do click on About Jenkins, all right, we are running the latest version, and that is 2.479. And this is running on Java 17 because that is, you know, the version of Java that is now supported. And I encourage you to also use the same version that we're using, all right, to set up your Jenkins environment as well. So thank you so much, guys. I will see you in the next video where we'll talk about, you know, some other important things about Jenkins, particularly all right, when you click on the new item, you can see that you have different types of items you can create. There's the freestyle project, there's the pipeline, there's the multi-configuration, there's the multi-branch pipeline, all right, and a whole lot of other things, okay? So we're going to be talking about some of these things as we go on in the course of the series. So thank you so much. I'll see you on the next video.